Welcome to part two of episode 18. I'm back at the Richmond Golf Club and before I go out to play 18, I'm going to show you my transition step between all that home practice and hopefully doing it on the course. I don't think it will come as a surprise to anyone at all that I'm doing the exact same stuff I'm doing when I'm practicing at home, only I'm transitioning by trying it here at the practice areas at the course. So I've been working on my stroke at home and that's the exact same thing I'm doing here, only now I'm doing it on a putting green with grass and holes and slopes. I can practice reading the green and I can get a feel for the speed here before I go out there. And again, the same with chipping. I'm playing off grass to a green that has slopes and holes, so I can practice not only landing the ball where I want, but seeing if the ball behaves how I think it will when it does land. Now, arguably the best thing about this is that I can play bump and runs, I can play flop shots, any version of a chip that I want, without worrying about smashing a window. I can even jump in there and practice. And as great as nets are, there is nothing quite like the amount of feedback you'll get from watching the actual flight of your ball at the range. It's all the same drills, everything I'm doing at home, only here, hopefully, it's easier to see the marked improvement. So that's the transition step. I'll probably go hit a few more putts, but after that, I'll be out on the course. So just before we tee off, the first thing I want to tell you is that today I'm playing with Mr. Max Bennett. He is my partner in a stage golf competition called the Bannister Foursomes, obviously a foursomes competition, and we're playing that tie on Monday. So we're out for a little bit of practice and we're just going to talk strategy as to how we're going to go about playing that round. Now, my personal strategy for today is to not get in any trouble. I'm going to try and hit fairways and greens and see if that makes any difference. So let's see if my improved course management has any relation to my score. I'm hitting a three wood, which Again, I was like, should I hit a seven wood and just, you know, because people come up here and hit like six iron and, yeah. and it's just what level of safety you want, you know what I mean? I'm just going to can pretty much aim for the bunker and put it short of the green, short of the bunker, hopefully in the middle of the fairway. If this doesn't work, it could be an iron come Monday, but we'll see. Well, depends who's actually teeing off you, doesn't it? It's not even greensomes. That's the tactic here, just find the green. Anything on the green is good. A bit left and it's maybe a bit short. Green. Yeah, it's not very good, but it's on the green. Two putts for a par, that's what we're thinking. Right, anything inside three feet. Catch the hill. Thank you very much. Lovely start. Fairways, greens, two putts. Thanks very much. Next hole. Oh, see, that's a supposedly safe three wood. I think that landed on and then rolled off the green. Never mind. Could have done with another club actually. No, it's fine. I'm just considering whether or not I should putt or chip. Right, it's all uphill. Get there, get there, get there, get there, get there. Still my mile shot. Rattled it. This is not actually an easy putt. Come on, don't be daft. Or pull it. There's somebody there. Considering I've now hit one straight, one massive slice, and one massive hook, this finding the fairways and playing safe thing. <laughs> I don't really think there's much benefit in playing short. I was literally looking at what all my options were there in terms of playing safe, and short of just punching it on the fairway and then having a second shot. I don't really see the point in that.
Is that a bunker? Might be bunker. But lovely light. That was a beautiful light. It was literally on the pin. Good roll, but it's a terrible wine, terrible weight. Sorry. So like the f every hole except the first have at least three putted. Just thinking whether or not I do want to just take my driver out and smack it or not. I think I do. To this playing safe. Sh Maybe. There's a good smack and there's a wind behind, so maybe. But it was big. Right if it's. Right. Well, it can't be over the bunker. The bunker's f massive. It's Scottish weather, isn't it? This, seriously, I don't know how many episodes you've watched, but this has happened in about four episodes. That's where it starts off all gorgeous and sunny, and then I'm playing through the f hail by the end. So yeah, we got klaxoned off for a while and I figured that I had enough footage for this episode so I put the camera away and used my brolly holder for, you know, my brolly. Sadly however, that does mean that I can't now show you the massive turnaround I had with my putting. I got up and down six times after that. I hold a 25 footer followed by a 48 footer in successive holes and no, I just told you I don't have any proof. I will, however, in order to keep the show balanced, show you the little tiddler that I missed at the second hole as part of... Excellent excrement. Set. Excellent. Oh, whoa! <laughs> yeah. Excrement. Excellent excrement. That was one of quite a few really good bunker shots yesterday and I have to put that down to Seve's The Short Game, which I did watch the night before. As you'd imagine, the man knows what he's talking about. So Seve, if you are watching, thank you very much for your help. Now let's have a quick look at some comments. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so there are quite a few, as is always the case after an episode with Jane. So I'm gonna try and cram in as many as I can, but I am gonna bookend them as well first and foremost, with two brilliant examples of amateur golf. Nick Martland sent me this, along with a simple caption, golf, and a crying laughing emoji. Nothing quite like six pars, a double, a birdie, and an 11 to perfectly define golf. I've also just found out today that Nick has just got engaged to the love of his life, so massive congratulations, buddy. But for us now, it's time for us to look at everyone's love of Jane. Um, Rakesh quotes Jane saying there's no point decorating the rooms up here if your house is going to fall down and adds in a mic drop. Uh, he also asked which app Jane was using for the swing analysis. I'm pretty sure she said it was V1. Um, John Kirk comments, love this saying, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Your swing is getting so much better though, no abalower this time. Thanks John. I did wonder with all that talk of smoothness if you were going to segue into chat about abalower. Um, Marcus Wood, I'll definitely be trying out some of these tips next time I'm at the range. Every shot I hit practically looks like it'll come down with snow on it. Yeah, me too. Um, Ping7979. Son of Ping7878. Some solid ball striking there. Uh, much better posture with the driver set up too. And Special K throws in great content and great advice from Jane again, although it's interesting to see that basically your whole swing has to be tweaked. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, there's every chance that I'm going to get worse before I get better. There was some improvement in my short game yesterday, but when it came to my longer game, I was completely clueless. Which brings us on to our last comment and the final bookend uh, from Matt who you may remember I played Richmond with a couple of weeks ago. He's a good friend who was giving me the chipping tips as well. And he plays off about four or five. Now, his comment is, 
I'm swing blind at the moment. I don't know how anything works. I always go through this once a year. I have no idea how the wrists are supposed to work in the swing. And to illustrate his point, he sent us this. An excellent little homage there, Matt. Thank you very much. And thanks to everyone for your comments as well. Now, let's look at the diary. I had a couple of easy days after getting my MFR treatment on Thursday last week and then started trying to get into this daily routine. Uh, I just played one round at Richmond, so only about 16 hours of golf this week. Looking ahead to next week, I'm not sure what I'm going to actually show you yet, but I will be practicing my daily routine at home, playing my foursomes match on Monday, Hampton Court Palace Golf Course on Tuesday, and Richmond Park Golf Course on Wednesday, which is a different Richmond course. Um, if you'd like to suggest or request, throw it in the comments. I'm never actually on these, but I do get notifications about this. And rather than do my ding the wee bell speech, I'm just going to say this. If you enjoy the videos, please tell someone you play golf with about them. The next time you're on the course, just mention Golo Like a Pro at some point during the three and a half hours. So wish Max and I luck in our match on Monday. Send us some Seve Miracle at Medina vibes. This one's for, for him. And fingers crossed we'll have some good news to report next week. Till then, be good, and if you can, shout for it.